with three Spider-Mans and a hammerhead. Okay, people, welcome back to another Foosh review. Today, let's take a look at the Hasbro Marvel Legends Spider-Man Retro Series Ben Riley Spider-Man Hammerhead Armored Spider-Man and Symbiote Spider-Man. Special thanks to Dorkside Toys for sending these out. I guess they're getting straight cases of each character and they haven't received Shocker and Hobgoblin. Yeah, those are the two that finish this wave. I'm gonna go ahead and take a look at these four and then come back around to the other two because I have some custom plans. It may be a overview slash play day situation. But looking at the packages, it's that throwback to the 90s to a time when I wasn't really collecting Marvel figures. You get some cool graphics here by the big bubble showing everything you get in the package. I mean, there's nothing hidden except by this glare. Just some nostalgia for those of you who collected back then or were kids when these were out originally, or you know what I mean. On the back, you get bios for each character, kind of a instruction thing to show you swap hands swappable hands again and again rest of the characters in the wave like i said shocker and hobgoblin should be coming to me later each sold separately warning small parts don't put them in your mouth and that's about it there's a nice simplicity to it let's go ahead and start with ben riley because it's <laughs> not my f favorite spider-man ever not that i have anything against ben riley personally <laughs> i wasn't reading comics or anything around then there's always this air hole right here <laughs> Did I not do this right? Trash between me and toy. I will say that I kind of feel like it's a nice update to the original Spider-Man costume. I know Astonishing X-Men came after this redesign. Maybe, I think. Yeah, probably right. But I always call that modernization of a classic, the Astonishing filter. It's recognizable, but has more flair to it. It has the red web field, and for the most part, it's painted fairly clean. I mean, where it starts and stops because of articulation, I can get a bit eyesore, but that's how plastic works. It's not a one piece of cloth over a body. Same on the legs, if you turn the art, look, ah! But again, <laughs> that's how it works. Design covers half the foot here on the outside. And as always, the outside is what is important. You know, that's why there's a red peg down here at the bottom because it blends in with the red field here. Unfortunately, it's a whole red peg, so it sticks out the other side. But this design does not do that on the arms, so you get full blue all the way around. Then there's red and web on, well, just certain fingers. Very thwit forward. It's made specifically because, I, which is cool, it emphasizes the finger sticking out in this position because you get to wall crawling and not as effective, but it's still neato. As far as I can tell, these web shooters, are they a separate? Uh, let's see. Oh, they are a separate piece, but not glued down. Come here. It is very form-fitting. And then the rest is blue plastic. So different blue than the retro Spidey that originally debuted this body with the updated Spidey type articulation. And I don't think I've ever looked at this on camera. While I love added articulation, there is some oddities. We'll get to certain things here in a minute, but right off the bat the biceps jump out at me i don't know if it's emphasized because of the red and web going straight into just the blue it seems to just it's better hidden when there's intricate design work coming down and around it's also slightly thicker than what i think of when i usually think of spider-man but again different artists different renditions I, I that doesn't bother me too much i think the biggest complaint i've ever seen and now that i'm really manhandling one is the gap that happens whenever you crank back the dumbbell at the neck. It's not super terrible, especially when you get it down into poses. It's kind of revel techy now that I think about it. it. Has this cutout on the back for added range and that also kind of opens up. Not a lot of down. I don't know if this gives you any more than a hinge would. And what's this? Did I miss something on the original figure that plugged in? But going over that articulation, there is a dumbbell joint at the top of the neck. This much up, which is nice. This much down, which uh, could be better. Gives you some tilt though. Butterflies at the shoulders comes forward way back. Shoulders pinned into that so it rotates all the way around. Hinge at the shoulder comes up. Swivel at the bicep. Double elbow comes up to there. Swivel at the wrist and then hinges in and out. Dumbbell joint mid torso. Is that what it is? Yeah, dumbbell. That allows some forward, some back, some tilt, some tilt, rotation. As we always see with dumbbell joints at the mid torso, they're usually hindered because they don't want to open it up too much. It's the front of the figure. It's what we're looking at 80% of the time. So they compensate with a hinge at the waist that gets you to here. All together, you're going to get this. There is a drop down at the hip. Ball going out to the leg comes up. Ooh, that far. Back out. Still not all the way, but better than some previous Spider-Mans. Swivel at the thigh. Double knee comes up. Oh, that's so close. 
Kick your clone ass, boop. Shin swivel, hinge at the ankle goes back, forward, forward facing pin for rocker. Like I said, in most poses, that gap isn't super noticeable, especially since you're gonna be looking here, here, here. Like Revel Tech, you gotta pick your angles. But again, this is my first real hands-on with this body, and ooh, it's not bad at all. I may have to mess around with this some more. For accessories, comes with two thwip hands. There's not too much fear of this. Oh, damn it. Also comes with two fists and then wall crawling hands, which should be standard with every Spider-Man figure. Even if you're not using them for wall crawling, they're still oh, so expressive. Maybe he's sneaking. You never know. <laughs> There's so many uses for this. I think being calm is almost scarier than an angry face coming at you with a big flat head. First we crack the shell, then we crack the nuts inside. Damn it. And I am liking this way more than I thought I would. I, I'm not just <laughs> the biggest Hammerhead fan, but I can respect his place in a Spider-Man and or general Marvel villain display. For the most part, it does use foggy. <laughs> it's not foggy. The Happy Hogan body. Same arms, same legs, same shoes. Same body underneath looks like, for the most part, crotch piece, belt, tie, collar. It's the jacket that changes things up. Well, besides the colors and the heads, you know. Bigger collar, give it some of that vintage flair, and then a vest sculpted in between. Kind of locks up the center of the body because it doesn't open up. It's sealed shut, but at the same time, oh, it looks so good. Pinstripes add a lot too. It changes things up and adds a air of fanciness to it, you know, <laughs> again with that old school look. Almost mesmerizing though, and pretty clean, straight. The only thing I've really noticed is right here, they get close together but I can chalk that up to fabric bending or something. Oh, there's a slop right there. Pinstripes continue down to the legs, looking good, looking good. Oh, it's even on the back of the knee joints, but not down in the deep wrinkles on the bottom of the legs at the factory level. It's probably harder to get down in there. Oh, another thing I forgot is that that happy body is a bit bigger and thicker than our usual standard suited body. So while I kind of picture Hammerhead as a big, bulky, hulking beast, you know, ramming, I can also get down with this look. Again, it has more of a classic feel to it because of that. He is going to do something with that head. Because I like how they did this. It's not like a big skull. It looks like there was something added on the top and it's just a normal dude otherwise. And now I only have a picture of the hammerhead head that came with Chameleon back in 2016. I think I messed around with that recently on the Moffex Dark Knight Returns Joker, and now it's been lost in the mess. This feels a little bit more natural, on top of being a nicer sculpt overall, I think. There is a dumbbell joint up at the top of the neck, can look up, can kind of jut down, and then again we get that gap because of Hmm. But dumbbells give us this, and I like this. Side to side, pin at the shoulder, rotates all the way around. Hinge gets, well, not quite 90, but close. Bicep swivel, double elbow goes to, was that better in Spider-Man? Swivel and hinge. Again, hinge under there, hindered. Rotation at the waist. Ball coming out to the hip goes up, back, out. Hmm. Cut at the thigh. Double knee, ooh, bit tight. I hadn't been that yet, but there is positive vibes. Yeah. Hinge at the ankle goes back, very tight, goes forward, forward facing pin for rocker. Going over accessories, I wish I had that other head because of how easy this pops off. I wonder if you prefer that other head if it goes on here. But Hammerhead comes with two fists and I completely forgot to take a look at his brass knuckles. He punches you in the head, he marks you as head, you know, that'd be weird across the forehead. Those pop out and that gives them a relaxed left hand and a grippy right that holds the included baseball bat and that's a very solid very smooth but very solid and goes in the hand nicely very gangstery and while this looks you know hey i've got to go with the knuckles right because that is so unique to just this character oh looking tough yeah, gotta get his hammerhead in there because that's part of the look. Next up, we're gonna go with Symbio Spidey, which may catch you off guard because I always talk about how much I love the black and white costume or black and white costumes in general. And I absolutely adore it on a Spider-Man, but I've got a couple of these. The last figure we'll look at, that'll be the first, at least for me, when it comes to armor type. It's just a bit more exciting, even though, ooh, that looks beautiful. I do love this. <laughs> like the Ben Riley, 
This reuses that retro updated Spider-Man, which again brings it a bit of bulk, but I, well, now that I have a couple of symbiotes, I can use them as different eras of symbiote Spider-Man. Bringing in the symbiote that came with the Craven 2-pack, it's much thinner, lither, and more stylized. Look at the size of the eyes. I can think of this as a more modern version. This, especially the eye size, takes me back to Secret Wars or around that general time. And I guess that works for the bulkier body too, because back then he was just, a, you know, a powered teenager doing spider things. Here they went, he should look more like a spider when he's doing spider things. I think both of these have a place on my shelf. But one of the things about the simplicity of this costume, it's always going to be harder to nail, to get all the details in place, especially when it comes to factory paint. On the front, uh, it's fairly clean. I do have this. It looks like a piece of slop that has rubbed off or something. There's also almost a 3D print texture to it. But the biggie with this suit, whether it's Venom or Spider-Man, is the black lines in the legs of the white spider. And again, on the front, fairly clean. Come around to the back, still fairly clean. I think I have some scratches here and here. Up here on the shoulder, it gets kind of wonky. I've also noticed some controversy online about the rectangles on the back of the hands, whether it's the right shape or it should have a dot in it. I think it should look more like the package, but that is getting nitpicky. I mean, at least there's some white back there. Back to the eyes, they are sculpted into the head and the white paint, mm, is it slightly high? You can see it missing the sculpt right there, but from normal distance, not noticeable at all. And honestly, I didn't know I needed this until I got it in hand. That smaller, more basic Spider-Man look to the eyes it's fantastic. I'm thinking I like this more than the stylized look I've been running with for a while. And maybe it's the black plastic that doesn't make the biceps as bulgy. Again, Ben Riley had the red blue bong. Here, the black blends in. It works costume wise. It's very, <laughs> it's very slimming. For articulation, we just did this a few minutes ago with Ben Riley. But real quick, dumbbell joint at the top of the neck, up, down, tilt, look left and right. Butterfly joint way back, way forward, rotates all the way around, hinge, swivel, double elbow, back and forth and around. So much hula hoop. Ooh, and very crunchy. Drop, uh, uh, uh. Swivel, double knee, cut, hinge, hinge, rocker. And same accessories, there's two fists, two thwips, which may or may not be necessary because of the symbiote, depending on the era, whether it's actual alien goo or just black cloth. And then of course, wall crawling hands. <laughs> Again, I love them. I mean, you can nail that old Secret Wars cover. You know which one I'm talking about. A little harder to get three-point stance or four-point stance without toes, but it does a pretty good job. And this head isn't included, but if you want to use the unmasked head with the black eye from the Craven 2-pack, it pops on nicely. It's it's good fit. And then finally, again, the one I was looking forward to the most, Armored, or well, Spider Armor Mark One or Armored Spider-Man. Although Symbiote was way better than I thought it'd be. Nobody knows who you are. And yeah, I know this is more Gamerverse inspired with the extra details and all that. It's not my beloved classic comic book look, but damn if this does not evoke the spirit of that almost perfectly. I'm never gonna grab about extra detail thrown in there. The web lines etched in to give it that plate look coming down to here and on the shoulders, there's some webs down the arms, forearms all the way around. Even the hands are protected with this big plate on the back and then knuckle covers. The belt, spider emblem on the back has the angles cut out of it, but it still has a very vintage feel to it. Oh, and are those even squares for the legs sticking out? That's also a better look at that basketball texture on the undersuit. Just, oh man, adding so much detail to it. Along with seams coming down, this different look here, it switches it up. Then knee pads, shin guards, back of leg guards, and feet that have just a little bit of armor to them. Some paint slop here and there, breaking up the silver, and I think it's mostly noticeable because of the shininess. Oh, right there, right there. Oh, but shinier than I expected. Of course, I'm under my lights here. They're all blasting away. In a regular display, it looked more grayish maybe, but it still has a shine to it. Oh, right there. The front logo, they could have just made it black to stand out against the silver, but you can actually see undersuit through it. Slight texture poking through. That's also coming up to the back of the head and it gives it a bit of a helmet look, which helps the overall proportions because my first thought was to say, oh, the head is slightly large when you take a look at it. But thinking of it as a helmet, 
yeah, that works completely into that. Again, if you're dead set on wanting that comic book suit that has the armor plates and everything, this isn't that, but this is close enough for me for now. Unfortunately, dumbbell joint at the top of the neck, but it doesn't have the same cutout and stuff. There's still not enough clearance. There should be more under the skull and then in the neck itself should be, well, that's a tiny hole for that stick to come through. Going over that articulation, like I said, you can get down, but it springs back. This is definitely my favorite and it works well here, but you still gotta have some more up and down for a Spider-Man figure. To the left, to the right, arm rotates all the way around, hinges out, bicep, double elbow, oh, actually beats the other two. Rotation, hinge in and out, hinge at the torso, works beautifully, arcs back. Rotation at the waist, and does break the belt, but those sculpted lines in there, it does a little bit to hide it. Ball coming out to the hip, goes forward, back, out, yeah, pretty standard now, I guess. Thigh cut, double knee, goes up, to, oh, kicks above his ass. Hinge at the ankle, goes back, goes forward, forward facing pin for rocker. For accessories, there are two fists, like the other and a lot of other Marvel Legends, the hands pop out, which gives us an alternate set of thwip hands. Thwip hands does mean webbing. Well, it doesn't mean webbing for the other Spider-Mans, does it? But for this one, it means some web effects. Just a rubbery translucent plastic that, oh, it looks good. But unlike, I think it was the other Game Reverse figures that came with web effects, where it goes around the shoulders or does something, this seems more like web misses. Like, it... it didn't hit the enemy and just went on the ground. Kind of the same for this one, although it does have a bend in the middle of it, which I guess, hmm, come here, hammerhead. I guess it could be a quick, don't move. That won't hold me for a quick, shut up. More limber than you would expect, especially in the real world, wearing this much armor, he's not gonna be as bendy as he is in his usual Spider-Man uniform, but not as agile as the other two Spider-Mans we've looked at. Size-wise, Ben Riley stands at about six and a quarter, which also makes Symbiote six and a quarter. Hammerhead's slightly taller at six and five sixteenths, and then Armored Spidey is slightly shorter at six and an eighth. Not as big a size difference as I was expecting, or I had built up in my head, I guess. Again, it's hard not to imagine Hammerhead as a big, burly, bulky bastard but he does have some size on the Spider-Mans. And then like some of the other Game Reverse armors, the armored Spider-Man is smaller. Oh, well, I guess that's easier to show than to just, you know, blurt out. Bringing the two Spider-Mans from this wave back in, you can see that the size is consistent Spider-Man to Spider-Man in Marvel Legends. It's just a change in muscle mass most of the time. Some are thicker, some are thinner. I wonder why we don't see this body more. And they even hold their own with imports like the Metacom Moffat comic book Spidey and the Sentinel Into the Spider-Verse SV Action Peter Parker Spider-Man. And that's stylized, but it also came from an animated film. Here's Symbiote with the Marvel Legends Venom, or well, the Marvel Legends Venom I have. And then the Metacom Moffat Venom and the Marvel Legends movie Venom, who is slightly taller, you know. And then for Hammerhead, again, he uses the Happy Body, which is broader than your standard Marvel Legends suit body. This is the same for some of the other civilians on my Spider-Man shelf, like Mary Jane and Jonah. Yeah, I'm still rolling with my custom. I haven't replaced him yet. But he also fits in with some of the more grand scale villains, like Red Skull and Ultron. So at the end of the day, uh... A nice little assortment of Marvel Legends. Very Spider-Man heavy, which makes sense in a Spider-Man line, but a nice variety of Spider-Mans, plus, you know, a villain. I still don't care for Ben Riley, but I'm glad to have a nice representation of this costume on the shelf. I've always been a big fan of the armored Spider-Man, and again, while it may be from the video games, it's still very classic inspired. We've also gotten a few symbiote spideys through the years, but this one being on that updated body, even though it still has a few hiccups, this is my new shelf symbiote Spider-Man. I just love the throwback eyes. It just works for me. But then there's Hammerhead, who I actually like way more than I thought I would. Sure, he's just gonna stand there looking menacing, but that's what good villains do. And this figure conveys that to a T. But the cool thing about this, if you don't need any one of these characters, it's a retro line. <laughs> There's no build a figure. You don't need it to get that one piece. You can just pass on by if you want. And if they are coming in solid cases, then you just wait and you'll get the ones you want eventually. And that's what I like about the retro lines. They're kind of filling in spots or giving people who like the offshoot villains and costumes a chance to get what they want. And there ain't nothing wrong with that. That's just more plastic out there for more people. If you have been waiting for these, oh, 
they're all good in their own way. If you enjoyed this review, comment, like, subscribe. Much, much love to the plus if you're interested in seeing videos early or in a position to help out the channel, patreon.com. But wherever you may be watching this, I'll always catch you on the foosh. There's also something going on between these two figures. It's the same body, but for some reason, Riley seems more agile than Symbiote. I don't know if it's the neck or, or something, the tolerances maybe? I'll need to continue to pose these around, see what happens.